All right, guys, I'm just moving some things around in the living room. I have a delivery from Homery coming today. I'm really excited for it. And if you saw our last vlog, you'll probably already know we're doing a couple of updates in our living room. And I was already on Homery's website looking at their plant stands and plant shelves, and I was really interested in them. And then they contacted me out of nowhere and offered to send me something from their website. They just sent me like one page of items to choose from if I wanted to use something in our decor. And I picked out this little love seat. But yeah, that vase, that was my inspiration for this piece. I love the shape of this. I'm just curious, like it reminds me of a piece of art, but I'm curious what the actual upholstery, like the fabric on it is gonna be like. Okay, I'll update you guys as soon as it arrives. So, uh, how would you just push it over here? Yeah, if possible. Is that okay? You can give me a first and last name, then a signature right below. Okay. Thanks, you too. So he dropped it on the front porch here. I guess they don't move the furniture inside. So I'm just waiting for them to leave because it would be like really awkward to go out and start wrestling with it, <laughs> with, with them still like out there. So I'm just gonna wait and wrestle with it in private. <laughs> So we got that uncovered. Oh my gosh. That's a surprise. That's a surprise. So I was curious what the upholstery fabric was gonna be like on this. If it was gonna be, if it was gonna look true to what the pictures showed or if it was gonna just be like a, some sort of plain velvet upholstery. I wanted it to look like the pictures. And so far this one peak, it does. I'm very, very excited about that. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is actually, I'm so stoked. <laughs> this is actually looking really nice. Good morning guys, it's the next day and I'm in the plant room right now. I was looking at some different options for the Homery love seat that just came in. At first I was thinking, oh, it'll probably go in the living room. But then after it came in, I was looking at it and I was going, that would be so cute to have in the plant room. It's a really cute little piece and I think it would be a really neat accent to be surrounded by plants, you know, have a jungle of plants hanging around it. But now that I'm looking at our doorways, I don't think it's gonna fit in here because we have some narrow doors in the back here. So the two back rooms of our house that we're renting. But I'm gonna do a couple more measurements and just see what we can do. Okay, so the actual opening width here to be able to get anything through the door would be 28 inches. Okay, that's gonna be too narrow. So I know the plant room is out, but it would have been a really cute piece to have in the plant room, um, but that's okay. We've got, we've got enough going on in the plant room right now. Sorry, babies, you don't get a love seat. <laughs> And then this is our bedroom in here, and I'm just gonna see, I think this door is a little bit wider, oops, um, but yeah, no, that's gonna be like 30 inches is gonna be the max to get through there. But we've also got this angle that we'd be working with too, of that wall, so I think the bedroom is probably gonna be out too. Okay, so it looks like after doing the measurements, it's gonna end up being a living room piece. Now it is more of an accent piece. I would call this like a, a luxury love seat. Like it's kind of a, a boutique luxury piece. It's really quite nice. I mean, it's solidly made. Like when you go to move it around, like it's a really nice solid piece. And as far as the cushioning goes, it's definitely more dense than like what we had before. Our sofa before was like super cushy. This one definitely has more density to it. So it is more firmer, but it's a really gorgeous, gorgeous piece. The texture of this is so wintry and beautiful. It's like a very wooly Sherpa kind of upholstery. I love modern organic styling, you know, very organic textures with a lot of modern shapes. And I think this is gonna fit in perfectly. Oh, and just in case anyone's new here and you're like, what is this tree doing in the house? <laughs> what on earth is that giant stick in here? Uh, that is our cactus skeleton. It's a Choya cactus skeleton and it has a really cool texture to it. Um, oh, I should give it, I should give like a, a warning though if you don't like 
uh, holes, um, turn away now <laughs> because I know that's like a thing. Sorry, I know it's kind of like a, a phobia for some people. So I apologize if, if that is triggering at all, but I really find the, the texture of these Troya cactus skeletons really, really cool. So this is definitely one of those pieces that is less like a regular traditional piece of furniture and more like a, a modern art piece in your home. So yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that ahead of time, exactly what type of piece we're working with and that it's not meant to be like a big loungy sectional or big loungy chair, you know, that you kick back in. And since we sold our sectional off, um, my Michael had really wanted to sell that because it was quite large. It was a 12 footer. And so when we move, we knew that we didn't want to take that with us. So that's why he just wanted to sell it ahead of time. But I'm going to be styling this in our living room as our main seating piece, because right now we don't have any other seating in our living room. Um, so that is the plan for this piece for now. Otherwise, uh, if it would have fit in the plant room, I would have whisked it off into there and made a whole jungle surrounding it. Um, but instead we're going to do it in the living room. Okay, I'm just checking the plant. We treated this with systemic um, last time, last time you guys saw this plant, but look at how much it's grown. It's all the way, it's like two inches past the top of the pole now, which is crazy because I think before it was, it still had like a foot to go, but that thing is, I can't believe how fast it's grown because I haven't had it very long. Now this video is not sponsored by Homery, but I just want to thank them for sending this out and allowing me to collaborate with them. They have a huge website, like a ton of categories on there. They've got like everything on there, including really cute plant stands that I would like to take a look at again. I couldn't just pick from anything on their website though. It was just a select amount of pieces to be able to choose from. And the first few pieces I chose from were like uh, like rattan pieces. They have this really cool like arched closet or wardrobe, I guess they call it. Um, and they've got like, you know, rattan benches, rattan accent chairs. They got like some really cute stuff on there. But the rattan items I was looking at and wanted to share with you guys were not available at the time. So I ended up picking out this piece instead. I will post Homery's website in the description box down below. So I will have the link to their website there. And also they have a coupon code going on right now. So I will have that link below also for you guys. So definitely check them out. I think that's why I like interior design so much because it's, it's like you just get to play, you know, you just get to play with your space and you get to create whatever feeling you want when you walk into that space. So my goal is for the living room today is to lush it up a bit. So I want to get some more greenery in here, more plants. I've always had like a couple of plants in here, um, like before, you know, this is a newer plant here. So this is one of the, the first new additions to the living room. Oh, you know what? Let me wipe down those shelves actually first. And in fact, can can you guys see this? I'm gonna grab this mat. Th this is my string of hearts, by the way. It has been like curling and forming a mat on the floor down here. And I know it loves this space. It loves this grow light. Oh, and these grow lights are the Soltec Solution grow lights. So I've got this pendant light here and then the light bulb in this Ikea lamp here. I love them because they're a warm white light so that they don't have like any cool tone. I wonder if I should let this go outside for a while because they like a lot of light and I might be able to actually hang it on the patio, maybe. Anyway, first I'm just gonna sit it over here. So I will be right back. I'm gonna move this vase. This is like, this has been one of my favorite decor pieces for so long. And anytime there's been plants somewhere, I always wipe down the space when I go to move them, just in case, you know, in case there was any like random pest or spider mite or something hanging out there. I just wanna make sure it's like clean and fresh for any new plants that are gonna be coming in. I love string of hearts, but they can be a little bit messy with their flowers. <laughs> they tend to drop those all over the place. Now this vase is made in Portugal. This is a piece I'm definitely going to be keeping in here because it's one of my favorite pieces. I got it at Home Goods a couple of years ago, and I love the kind of free form organic shape that it has. I just love those very smooth kind of rounded lines. So I'm going to put this back on the top shelf here. I normally kind of keep it there because I like the way that the light hits it. Okay, this plant I'm going to move towards the light. And is that, okay, it's just mealybug residue. I gotta wipe this plant down. I had to treat it with systemic um, a couple of weeks ago because it had mealybugs. Um, but I think we're, we're gonna get it though. Ew, God, those, I mean, they're kind of cute at first, but then they sort of gross you out, you know? Mealybugs, they're like cute and fuzzy and white, but then at the same time, they're like, 
they're gross. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, so it'll be getting full light from the window and then also residual light from the grow light on that side. So at least it'll be getting light from both directions. And this spray bottle I'm gonna leave out here. I have distilled water in here. It's one of those continuous sprayers that you can get on Amazon. Um, I'm gonna keep it out here because I like to miss the pool just to help them out with some extra moisture. So this I will probably keep right there. I'm thinking I'm gonna put one of the hanging philodendrons here. So I'll grab that. This is my philodendron Brazil. It's been growing in the plant room, but I'm gonna try it out here because they're pretty tough plants. And I think if anyone can handle it out here, it's gonna be one of these guys. So I'm gonna try it under here. And I think, I think it'll like this grow light too, the Soltec Solutions. I think it'll really enjoy that because it goes all the way down to the ground. And in the plant room, it wasn't getting as much light as it probably would have liked down, down at the lower, parts of the vines here. I've been having a hard time keeping it hydrated too, although I put it in a really big pot the last time I repotted it, but it must have already taken up all that extra space in there because it is just a thirsty thing, like all the time. It's always like going limp and I'm like, okay, I might have to repot it into like a plastic pot or something. So here's the micans. I'll put this one out here and I do plan on putting one up on a, a moss pole or something or on a cocoa pole. I mean, these philodendron micans, these things are gorgeous, aren't they? They're, I mean, those velvety leaves and the bronzy color, green to bronze. Oh, they're just stunning. So easy to care for too. So I'm gonna put this one on the, the middle shelf, I think, and I'm gonna leave it trailing for now. Let's see, we'll try that. All right, I'm gonna put this Elecombe's humidifier right down here in the center. And there's a plug right behind it, so it'll be perfect. And I'm just gonna scoot that forward and just direct the mist so it misses that shelf and goes out, outward. And then I'll plug it in here. It says it's 41% humidity right now. I'm just gonna scoot that a tad over closer to the window. Now this plant I got at an estate sale last year. Maybe you guys might recognize what it is. It has these palmate leaves. I thought at first that it was some kind of umbrella plant. It's got this little fat codex down here though too. Can you see its little body? It has like a little, a little fat body. It's almost like some kind of weird like little bonsai thing going on. But I got it in the state sale for $15 last year. If you guys happen to recognize what this might be, it has extra rounded leaves, which kind of threw me off because I know a lot of the plants that I thought it was, they have more pointier leaves and I just never figured out what this rounder leaf version was. Should we put it like maybe, maybe there? I feel like it needs to sit up on something. Don't you, don't you feel like it needs to be up a little higher? Maybe. Hold on, let's try this. I really like finding unique pieces to use in decor, especially vintage pieces that are very um, unusual and just really different, kind of eclectic. This is a camel saddle ottoman that I found at an estate sale shop. Um, let's see, I guess it was last year sometime, but it's a carved camel. And normally they will have like a little fitted um, like cushion that goes on there. And I've been using like a little pillow, a little fringe pillow. But um, I think that I might try using this as a plant stand and see how that does for a while. I'm gonna put this right here. I think I'll try this plant on top of that and then it'll be a little closer to the grow light. This grow light, or well, it's a floor lamp that's from Ikea, but I've got one of the LED Soltec Solution grow lights in it. Uh, it's a little bit heavy of a bulb for this lamp, but it does, it does good enough. Like sometimes it has a hard time, you know, like the weight of the bulb can kind of, kind of make that droop a little bit, but most of the time it's okay if you sort of like wedge it, you know, like just right. <laughs> anyway, um, so I think this grow light, I'm gonna put on the opposite side over here. So one of the things during winter time that Michael and I like to do is we sort of change up or refresh the living room so it's more centered around the fireplace. So normally Michael will have the fireplace going pretty much all winter or you know from like late fall all winter into spring and so he he's really into like you know cutting all the firewood and doing all that stuff. So we're going to scoot the seat a little bit closer to the fireplace and I'm going to have it at an angle. So this is going to be almost like a little backdrop here and um, yeah. So I think, yeah, we're gonna shift this out a little bit. 
So I'm just matching the angle. You guys can't see it because it's just off camera, but where our fireplace is, it, our wall, it's not like a sharp corner. It kind of like curves. It's more like a bend. And so I'm just matching that bend on this side with the sofa. So our office and kitchen is right through there and you're gonna have like a straight walkway so you can still get to the front door. Um, the front door, we like almost never use that. Only when like, packages are delivered because they normally drop them at the front door. But when we're going outside, we're going into our carport towards our truck. So that's the, that's the other door. So this is more of like a very low traffic area here. Um, so I don't really worry about anything being too close to the door necessarily. This plant is gonna be in front of the grow light. I'm gonna scoot this over a tiny bit more. I'm gonna scoot this light back a little bit more. I've got our euphorbia right here. I'm gonna try moving the coffee table in front here and just make sure I've got enough room because I gotta make sure it stays far enough away from the fireplace. So I'll see if I need to scoot that back at all, but let's get this in front here first. And just see how much room we've got. All right, let's see how this is. So this is a Gabriella Crespi piece. Um, she was a designer and this is a split reed bamboo and they call it the waterfall design. So it kind of has this curve over the edge. I've shared this with you guys before, but in case you haven't seen it before. Um, but yeah, I got that in a set. Uh, so it has um, the side table too, which is on the, the other wall here that you guys can't see. But um, yeah, it's been one of my favorite, favorite finds on Craigslist and it was $75 for the set of two pieces. I love the modern organic kind of look, you know, lots of natural textures, really interesting abstract shapes and just kind of like pairing, you know, it's really the pairing of your pieces that make an interesting space. This is a very special floor puff here. This belongs to the Aguti and it will sit right here next to the sofa. I like it because the circular design, the, the weave that's in the floor puff matches our coffee table here that also has a circular design in it. So I'm gonna be setting this right here. Let's see, I think I'm probably just gonna add one of our large coffee table books here and just keep it pretty simple for now. So Michael and I have this book on Antarctica. We got that at an estate sale. I don't know what it is about Antarctica, but I have this fascination with it. Like I would love to go on an expedition there. There's just something really, I don't know, mysterious about it there. And I think it'd be really, really fun to go check it out. Um, anyway, so I thought, you know, if I put this book on here, I'm like, well, the blue is really gonna clash in this room. And so I popped the book open and what's the first page that it flipped open to? Yes, green. What is this? Antarctic ecology. And there's like a couple of, uh, I don't know, some sort of penguins on, on some rocks surrounded by greenery. So I'm just gonna leave that open because that's the book that Michael and I are both actually like pawing through lately. So I'll just leave it wide open on the coffee table and I won't have anything else on there. Okay, two things that are my favorite about this chair is number one, the shape of it and number two, the texture of it. I think I was calling it shearling before, but I think what I was meaning to say was more like Sherpa. It's like a short pile Sherpa kind of texture. It's just like so wintry. I love it. I love it. And if you wanted to make it more cushy, you could always add pillows in here too. The next thing I'm going to show you was a gift from my friend Grace. She sent them to me from Thailand. And when I opened the box, I just about died. I was like, are you kidding me? These are so adorable. They came in this really cute bag too. So it's Tropical Collection by Plants of Thailand. She sent me Gloriosum pillows, dark green velvet, gorgeous, and the stitching and everything on here is just absolutely beautiful. They're so plush and adorable. I love them. I love them so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sending those to me. These are absolutely precious. Uh, these are definitely going to be living in my living room here. So they're going to be right on this little sofa. So I wanted to mention if you do want to order these because it's international from Thailand, if you're somewhere else in the world, order them early. Like it, it can take like three weeks to a month to, you know, get something internationally sometimes. So definitely um, put an order in early. And I did mention that they have a coupon code, right? That works on their website and the Etsy store. So I will have that link below too. They also have different leaf designs. So they have like the Monstera Albo. I think they have a regular Monstera. They have a limited edition Pink Princess and they have the Alocasia Fry Deck. And who knows whatever other leaves they might be working on, but they have such cute designs. But I absolutely love this Gloriosum set. And I wonder if I come in close, if maybe you can see the little bit of shine in the stitching in the veins 
it just really adds a nice, nice touch. And they're also having a free card and treat for anyone ordering for the holidays. So definitely a good time to check them out. I'll show you what the tag says. It has tropical collection by plants of Thailand. But yeah, I think these would make really cute gifts for plant lovers, definitely. We also had some other plans for the living room to add a little workout area. And I think I'm gonna do that on the side that I'm standing right now. Um, I was gonna get like a cork mat, I was thinking for yoga, but I'm, I, I don't have that right now. So I'm not gonna do this side of the room quite yet. I'll have to save that for uh, like a part two of living room updates. Oh, I forgot to mention this plant. I always get questions about it and people were asking uh, like what kind of cactus it is. But yeah, this is Euphorbia ingens and it's from Africa. It is a succulent. Um, it's not a cactus, but it is. it has a cactus look to it. It's also known as a candelabra tree. They have a very interesting interesting texture to their their skin. Michael nicknamed this plant the alligator and uh, it is it is very unusual looking but that is for sure one of my absolute favorite plants. I should do a video on like my favorite African plants because they have some really special and unique plants in Africa and since we're looking at this plant I might as well mention about the care. They like bright light like I could be growing this outside on the patio I'd probably love that but um, you know, if you put it out where it's gonna be exposed to sun, you would definitely want to make sure it's acclimated to that so it doesn't get burned because they can burn if they're not used to the sun intensity. And I water it kind of like a cactus. I do err on the side of underwatering because they are a very succulent plant and they can be prone to root rot if they were in a, you know, maybe a soil mix that was too dense for them that was holding too much water. So you do wanna you know, care, be careful about that. They like a fast draining soil, but they do enjoy their water and they will grow more if you make sure that you are consistent with their watering. Sometimes I will just completely forget about it and I'll go for stretches of time where I don't give it any water and uh, it completely stops growing. It does have some little tiny leaves right now because I finally watered it again and it gets all excited and happy and starts growing tiny leaves and the top of the arms will get their shine back and it just looks, um, it just looks more alive on, on the very tips. So you'll notice it. If you're growing one of these, you'll notice when, when you got that right balance of water um, and you're not underwatering it too much. You, you can definitely underwater cactus, by the way. Like I've killed cactus by underwatering them, poor little things. So fast draining soil, bright light, and water during their growing season, um, air on the side of underwatering, and they should be okay as long as they're in a quick draining soil mix. And oh, as far as the spines go, if I come in close, you might be able to see them a little bit. So they're just on the ridges and you can see every little brown uh, dot there is where there's a spine. So it's pretty sparse. It's not like it's not like a cactus, you know, where they're totally covered in it, which I actually really enjoy that, being able to see that green. It's just a really beautiful plant. Oh, and if you live in Tucson and you're looking for one of those Euphorbia ingens, I bought mine at Box Cactus Nursery, and I think I've seen them at Green Things too. But yeah, I bought mine at Box and it, it did not have any arms when I first bought it. And it put out the arms um, since, since we've been growing it. And it's only ever been inside the house here. Oh, and down here on the bottom shelf, I didn't really show you guys because I didn't do any updates down here, but those are our ammonite fossils. We have two of those. And then Michael's concretion from France is down there. Um, so that is uh, the same. We didn't change anything there. Oh, and current humidity in the room is 40%. And oh, I did add a couple of quartz crystals on the very top shelf here because I can never get enough of crystals in the house. I absolutely love them. They make me so happy just to look at from across the room. Hey guys, it's the next day and I just wanted to say goodbye because I was editing this video and I realized that I didn't have a proper ending on the video yet, but it is so chilly out this morning, but it's beautiful. It's like perfectly clear, gorgeous, deep blue sky out there. I think I gotta clean out the fireplace now and prep that for making a fire because it is now time. Fall is here and it is getting cold in the desert. All right guys, so those are our winter living room updates for now. I do have some other ideas for the living room because um, this wall, like this side of the room, we haven't done anything with like where you guys are right now. 
And I was thinking of a couple different things that I could do over on that side. I do have some plant related decor items, but I think I'm going to save that for a separate video because there's still a couple items I'm waiting for to come in that I ordered on Amazon. So it's going to be like mostly Amazon and Ikea kind of plant uh, styling items or plant decor. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video, doing our winter living room updates, or at least a few of them for now for this video. And I've got to get to work on the next video. I to clean the fireplace and first i think i'm gonna make some breakfast though either southwest vegan breakfast tacos that sounds good or oh both we're gonna do a giant green smoothie and then breakfast tacos yeah because i'm starving okay all right i love you guys and i will see you very soon in the next video which i'm starting work on right now love you guys bye